When I first started using Luminar Neo years ago, I tried every tool and every slider. And since then, they've added more tools and more sliders. There's probably 200 individual sliders in Luminar. And I continue to experiment and learn these tools, but I keep finding that I come back to three tools the majority of the time. They're powerful, they're amazing, they give you incredible results, they're not that hard to learn, and they can make your photos look fantastic. In this video, we're gonna cover those three tools. I'm gonna to show you how I use them. We're gonna get started right now. I've got this photo here, which is fairly flat and fairly boring, to be honest. And what I wanna do is amp up the light and the color. And that, those are the two things that I spend the most time editing when I'm editing a photo. These are the things that I adjust the most. Tool number one is develop raw. If you're not shooting raw files, I do recommend that you do that. You get more data. It's a richer data set, gives you a bit more leeway in post. But even if you're shooting JPEGs, you can still use what would then be called develop. It's an incredibly powerful tool. It gives you so much control over the light and the overall color. Look, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So on a photo like this, I'm gonna bring it a little bit brighter. I like to add contrast, but I tend to do uh, highlights and shadows first. So I'm gonna pull the highlights down lift the shadows a little bit, and then come back and add a little bit of contrast. I want to have nice contrast in the photo, but I tend to like to do exposure highlights and shadows first. As far as whites and blacks, you get a little bit more flexibility here in terms of adjusting that light. And I'm gonna make these uh, blacks a little bit brighter. And what I'm gonna do in temperature is slightly cool this off. Now, we are gonna be adjusting color in this video, and one of the tools is Probably, not probably, it is the actually best tool for controlling color. I'm gonna take the tint a little bit to the right to create a little bit more of that magenta look. I skip saturation, I give it a little bit of vibrance. I don't like to do very much color work uh, here in Develop Raw. I prefer to do that in other tools. We're gonna to get to that in a second. A little bit of sharpening, you know, 15 or 20. I'm not gonna do any noise reduction, no optics, no transform. But let me show you the before and after for this specific tool before and after. Now, it's already a much better looking photo, but this is where I like to jump into tool number two, and that is Super Contrast. If you've been here before, you know that I love to start with Develop Raw and Super Contrast because they are the two best tools at adjusting the light and getting me started. What I'm always doing when I start a, uh, an edit is getting the light right and I do color next. So I'm gonna come in and Usually I pull these to about 25 or 30, you know, and what it does, as you can see, it's already making a nice impact on the overall look of the photo. And then after I do those contrast sliders, I like to come back with the balance sliders and play with them a little bit. I actually want to brighten that sky a little bit. This was a sunrise in Las Vegas. I was just about the only one out, except for maybe some people that hadn't yet been home. But um, I want to come in here and I'm going to actually take this balance on the midtone slightly left as well. And then usually on the uh, shadows balance, I go a little bit right uh, to the right, and that creates a little bit deeper and richer look in the shadows. So before and after, not a massive difference, but it gives you a lot of control. Let me show you if I adjust this balance even further. You can see how much control I'm having over the light in the sky. And the same with the midtones, right? In fact, I think I'm going to take the midtones a little bit further, and that's going to further accentuate the difference between the dark parts, which are these trees that are in shadow. Maybe pull that balance back a little bit. Maybe pull that contrast amount back a little bit. And one more time, before and after. Subtle but powerful difference. Okay, that was tool number two. And tool number three, this is a very powerful, powerful tool. And it's all about color. And it's called Color Harmony. I love this tool. I use it all the time. And one of the reasons it's so powerful is because it has four different sections here. We're going to use three of them, and I'm going to start up here with Brilliance and Warmth. Now, keep in mind, these are global adjustments, so you do need to be careful. I don't recommend using every tool here every time, and if you do, and I'm going to use three of them, uh, but if you do use a lot of these tools, be gentle in terms of what you're doing because you can very quickly get over the top. You can see with this Brilliance slider. So I'm going to give that a little bit of bump. I'm going to get a little bit of warmth as well. And what I like to do in my edits is actually play the warm and the cool off of each other. It creates a little tension in the photo, and that color contrast, I think, helps accentuate the overall look. Now, having done that, I'm going to get into split color warmth. And here, I like to take these warm colors and drag them to the right to create additional warmth. Uh, and that's going to amplify that warm color. 
And then what I often do is to contrast with that, take the cool colors and go slightly left. And that's going to create a, a little bit cooler look in the cool colors. So again, I'm playing up that color tension or that temperature tension, but the difference between the warm and the cool, it helps me create the look that I want. And then the kind of the finishing touch here in terms of color is going into color balance. And one of the reasons I love color harmony, this entire tool is that the four different tools that are in it. But my favorite part of that is color balance. The reason why I like color balance so much is right here. You have the ability to adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we're going to start on the highlights, but essentially it, uh, isolates those tonal areas, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, and allows you to kind of push pull the color in any of those tonal areas that further kind of leans into what I'm doing with split color warmth and playing with that color tension idea that I talked about. So what I want to do with the highlights, and that's going to be primarily the sky, is drag that uh, cyan red toward the red to create a little bit more warmth there, and the magenta green toward the magenta to create a little bit more of that a uh, nice pink color in the sky. Now that I've finished that, I'm going to go into midtones. I'm going to do a slight bump in the reds here just to give that a little bit of uh, emphasis as well. And then usually what I do is go into shadows and I go the opposite there. This is again playing up that color tension. So I'm going to go to the right a little bit and that's going to create a little bit darker, deeper blues in those shadows. Let me show you the color look overall before and after. Now, one thing I notice after using these three tools is I still want to do a little bit of work in the sky. And what you can do is go to the edits tab, go back into develop raw, and I'm going to pull these highlights down further and take a look at that sky. It gives me a lot of control over that. And that's why I like to use these tools because it isolates those areas, highlights being in the sky, and I need to adjust that. Super contrast does some of the same, right? I played with some of that there, but let's go take a look at it now. I think those highlights look a little bit better. So don't hesitate to go back to some of these tools, develop raw, super contrast, or color harmony if you need to, and make further refinements. Now, if you take a look at the overall before and after, before, fairly flat, lacking color, lacking contrast, needs light adjustments, all that. Now, quite a bit of pop. The colors have been played up. That color tension or color difference has been played up. The light has been adjusted significantly which is contrast, that's highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, all that coming together to really give me the ability to control the light in the photo. So before and after. And that's why I like these three tools and why I think you can get 90 to 100% of your edit done with just these three tools. It's incredibly powerful, it's super useful. And there's one other little trick that I like to say for the end of my edit, and that is going into Accent AI. It's a powerful tool. I absolutely love it. And sometimes at the end of an edit, I'll just come in and give the photo a little bit of bump, 20, 25, something like that, but not a massive amount. So before and after gives it a nice little finishing touch, a nice little punch at the end of the edit. And I think that brings that photo to the finish line. So before and after three tools, develop raw, super contrast, color harmony, pro results in just a few minutes. It works every time. If you want to learn more about Luminor Neo, pick up my free ebook. It's a 27 page guide. And in that I share tons of tips and tricks about how to get the most out of this powerful editing platform. Thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care and until next time, adios.